Hi everyone, Christine Harrington here, the Savvy Sales Lady, and it's my birthday today. Happy birthday to me. And I wanna tell you a story about aging. Yes, I have reached the pinnacle <laughs> of what's supposed to be retirement age. And years ago, before I started my business, my sales coaching and training business, I worked at the cemetery that my dad was buried at. It was kind of a time for me to heal because I was so close to my dad and I had left the insurance industry because the company I worked for would not let me have even one day off to be with my dad when he was moved to hospice. So I was determined that I was not going to let my dad die alone. So I resigned my position. I never told my dad this. I told him I took off two weeks for vacation. Well, 10 days later, my dear dad died. So I made the right decision. And I decided to see if there was a position open working at the cemetery that he was buried at. And there was. So I started working at the cemetery, <laughs> selling um, funeral plots and mausoleum crypts, helping with services, final expenses, things like that. I did enjoy my time there, but I will say it does have a bit of an emotional impact on you, especially when you're dealing with grieving people every single day. But in a way, it was a blessing for me because it helped me heal and it helped me to be close to my dad where he was buried. Well, one day, Millie came in and I had never met Millie before, but apparently she came to visit her husband on a regular basis about once a week. I just so happened to be in the office that day when Millie walked in and needed some help. Now, I just by looking at Millie, I thought she was probably around maybe 68 to 70. And her and I started talking and she said that her husband had died 10 years ago and every week she came and visited him at his mausoleum at the cemetery. But she asked me for some help because she said all these years she has kept a folding chair in her car and she was always taking that chair out and putting it back in. And she said, is there a place that I can store my chair that I can get to easily when I come and visit so I'm not hauling it back and forth? So we weren't supposed to do this, but I did it anyhow and I found a little nook for Millie to put her chair in and keep it there. And I told all the maintenance groundskeepers, don't get rid of Millie's chair, please. Let's just keep this between us. And they did, they were great about it. Well, as Millie was leaving, she had said something to me about, you know, her goal was to reach living over a hundred. And I said, really? And I said, well, you've got what? maybe 30 years to reach that goal and she goes oh no honey she said i'm i'm 95. well you could have just picked my jaw up off that floor i could not believe it and i said wait a minute what you're 95. now millie was slim and fit and she was so vivacious and full of life she wasn't slumped over. She stood straight. She walked straight. She was in heels. <laughs> I don't think I've seen any 95 year old women in heels, but Millie was dressed, dressed to the ninth. I mean, jewelry and like I said, heels. So I, I, I couldn't believe it. And I said, my gosh, Millie, you're 95. And, and she said, oh yeah, I golf twice a week and um, I'm always exercising every single day. And I said, is that your secret? And she said, and one more, honey. 
I drink a glass of red wine every single night and I mostly eat salads. I eat healthy. And she said, just one glass of red wine, that's all you need. <laughs> I thought, hey, I can buy into that. And then she proceeded to actually touch her toes, not one time, not two times, but she did it 10 times in a row and showed me how flexible she still was at 95. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I wanna be Millie at 95 years old. I couldn't touch my toes 10 times in a row like Millie. <laughs> and I was, uh, I think, uh, 56 or 57 at the time. Yes, I. she was such an inspiration for me. And on my birthday, every single year, I think about Millie and wondering, did she reach 100? I'm sure she did. And she's probably still touching her toes. Why am I telling you this story? Because it's never too late, guys. It's never too late. In my coaching practice, I started it when I was in my late 50s. I had people telling me, wait a minute, you know, you should be retiring soon. Well, I'm 65, I have no plans to retire. <laughs> I hope I can still shoot videos at 95 years old like Millie can touch her toes. But I hear in my coaching practice two things, and that is the young clients say, I'm too young, nobody takes me seriously. The clients that are older, 50 and over, say, I'm too old, I'm dead wood, I'm the one that everybody wants to get rid of. Oh my gosh, guys, age is only a number, and you've heard this a million times. It's never too late. And every single day, I practice on who I want to be, what I want to become, and I teach this to all of my clients. Yes, it's never too late. You're never too young. Get that garbage out of your head. It's only a number. What really matters is, are you committed to be the best version of you? That's what really matters. And then are you working every single day towards being the best version of you or the best you can be or an elite or an expert? Think about it. Athletes who I admire because they know the discipline that it takes every single day. And you saw my video probably about Michael Phelps, about it's, it's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light. It's what you do when no one is looking that will make you the best, the expert, the elite in your field. It's not your age. And those of you that have retired from your prior uh, career, you can start a new career, why not? You have no pressure now at this age to prove anything other than to prove it to yourself. And that's all you should be doing is proving it to yourself. So happy birthday to me. <laughs> and I wanted just to share as my gift to you a little inspiration today. Do something today that will bring you closer to what you want to be. Bye-bye.